You are listening to Directions from a Spiritual Tour Guide podcast. I'm your host, Chanel Scott. I'm a psychic medium and energy healer who has been supporting those on a spiritual journey for over a decade. I'm your tour guide into the world of the unknown, showing you that the magic of the universe is at your fingertips. I believe spirituality is simple and fun, and this podcast will make it easily accessible, giving you the real talk on all things divine and spiritual, helping you to step into the flow. Manifesting your dreams because we all deserve to be living our best life. Are you ready for an adventure? Hello, sunshines, and welcome to a new episode of Directions from a Spiritual Tour Guide podcast. My name is Chanel Scott, and I am your host and spiritual tour guide on this journey we call life. Always here to share the real talk on all things spiritual, divine, mystic, and everything in between. This week, I wanted to talk to you about mediumship and the connection we have to the other side and my connection to the other side. Um, Mediumship has been a challenge for me in the beginning. And once I really kind of got connected to the energy of it, it's something that has become such a special skill for me, something that is so near and dear to my heart. Um, it is an incredible, incredibly special thing to share with people. I have been doing mediumship. Well, let me just start from the beginning. I saw spirits when I was a kid. Um, I would see spirits and entities and, um, at the beginning, it really didn't bother me. But then as I grew older, it definitely started to bug me. And, I was scared because people would show up and I didn't know who they were. So from the day to day and outside and about, it was no big deal. It's when they showed up at bedtime that I had an issue or showed up in the darkness was when I definitely struggled with it the most. And at a young age, I decided to turn it off because to me, it was scary. My mom said, nope, there's nobody in the doorway. You're not seeing anything. It's just your imagination. And yeah, mediumship is probably accessed through part of my imagination, but it definitely was real to me in those moments and it was scary and I shut it off. Even when I started to connect again into my spiritual side, into my intuition and the gifts that I had, it was something that was still really scary to me. I didn't know how to set boundaries around spirits and who was coming in and what time of day they were bugging me. I would wake up to spirits in my face or like spirits that I didn't want in my space being there. And it was just, it was overwhelming and still really scary. And then I read Sylvia Brown's psychic children. And that book just kind of gave me some of the boundaries that I needed to be able to um, allow myself space. So I suddenly said, no more spirits at nighttime. That is not when I need to be bugged. I'm very sensitive to my sleep and I didn't want to be woken up. Now, my only exception to that is the time that I volunteer in hospice. And if I have terminal patients that are clients that, you know, may need me in the middle of the night, they are more than welcome to visit me in the dream state. And it's interesting because I'm never tired after those. Um, and sometimes they literally just visit me in the dream state and I remember them in the dream state and help them to cross and I'm able to just move on with my sleep kind of thing. So it is a really special connection. But what I do these days is not so much in my general readings, although spirit comes in all the time during my private sessions with people. But what I really love is offering mediumship gallery readings. So a group reading and being able to connect with people. So it's a larger group of people and I'm sharing messages from loved ones and I always tease the loudest spirit gets heard first. And this isn't necessarily the spirit that was the loudest in the physical form, but it is who has the most urgent message or who is the most excited to come through that day. So the loudest spirit gets heard first and I just move through them. And it's so beautiful because they're very patient. They take their turns. They're not jumping over each other but they're also very respectful. I've had spirits show up and people not ready to visit or hear from them. And we've been able to share messages without having to share messages, literally just that they're here whenever you're ready. And it is incredible to see the things that come through. Now, a lot of people think that 
mediumship is a really sad thing that there's a lot of tears and you know it isn't um a joyful thing but the reality is is that there are more laughter in a gallery reading than there is tears most of the time um our connection to the other side is this really magical and beautiful thing being able to connect with our loved ones on the other side, to have access to them and readily available to them is such an incredible you know, tool to have, to be able to have conversation, to be able to ask for love and support, to find guidance. All of these things are incredibly special. In a gallery reading, it's interesting how the messages come through and who they're for, and even the fact that the people that gather often have a theme that comes together as we move through the evening. And it always turns out into this beautiful evening of messages and spirit. But even above and beyond that, I think one of the parts that I love it so much is the connection that happens amongst the people that attend. And often people don't know each other. You'll get small groups, you know, one or two or three people that come together. But often, you know, there is a group of people that don't know one another. And they're laughing with each other, they're crying with each other, they're sharing the messages with each other. And, you know, there's these moments where you see that the message for one person hits home for the next person. Or when someone starts to tear up, someone else grabs the box of Kleenexes to make sure it's close enough to them if they need one. Um, it's just, it's so beautiful to watch the connection amongst one another during these sessions. So let's just talk about mediumship for a moment because it is a really interesting tool and everybody's going to experience it in a different way. For me, the big change factor was when somebody said, the voices that you hear are not your own, but they sound like your own voice. And that one to me was like the moneymaker. That was the thing that I was like, that is what I needed to hear. That is what was the game changer. And suddenly I recognized that things that I was hearing that sounded like my own voice, but didn't sound like my own words, were really the other people speaking to me. Then I started to heighten my awareness and started to realize that I was also getting a lot of physical cues as well from spirit to tell me things. In the very beginning when I started to do this work, I would feel often how someone had passed um, as a way of connecting to them and bringing them through and would move through the process that way. And it would take me a little bit of time to be able to give it away and I often wouldn't know who in the room that it was going to. Sometimes I'd be able to direct it in the right direction, but often didn't know who exactly that I was giving the messages to. As time has gone on, and I've done a lot of mediumship readings over the years, and that has shifted and changed, and now it's more instantaneous. Even this afternoon, I had done a reading for someone, and before the reading started, I knew that there was a couple that was joining us, and instantly, the second we started talking, there was another gentleman that joined us immediately and wanted to bring in the, the awareness that he was there. The same thing happens for me when I do a gallery reading. Instantaneously, there is somebody that steps up and wants to be given away. And these days, I tend to be able to give it to the right person or, you know, narrow it down to two or three people that the spirit belongs to. And we, I just share some things about the spirit that are coming through, usually personality kind of stuff. And very quickly, we're giving them away and sharing messages. The more we do a skill, the deeper we get with it, the easier it becomes. But the thing about mediumship that I wanted to share today was this ease in death and dying. I think for me, there is this beautiful awareness of what happens on the other side that allows me to look at death and dying in a different way. It's not that I am detached from it or unemotional from it, but there is this beautiful piece of it that shows me at how beautiful the other side is and how that we still have this strong connection to the other side that we don't lose just through death. 
that we are able to still connect with those energies and those spirits and they are there to help and guide and support us to love us still on the other side. I get to see how spirits show me that there is no physical pain anymore or there is no mobility issues anymore, that they are running free, that they are pain free, that they are illness free, that they are disease free, that, you know, that they once were confined to a wheelchair or a cane and now they just run about. Those things, being able to share those messages and to be able to feel that energy and that excitement of the freedom they feel in their bodies or their energy bodies now is so incredible. It brings a sense of peace, a sense of relief. The other thing that they often come through and show me is they'll show me that they had passed at an old age if they were older. And then they will show me that they've returned to an age of um, youth. And for whatever reason, that's around 30, 35. That is the magic number. Who knew? Um, We all dread getting into our 30s and our 40s. But the reality is, is that on the other side, that is the dream age is about 35. I still remember years and years and years ago. This was probably on the beginning of my journey of reading professionally. I read for the sweetest woman who had lost her husband and I had the person who hired me had me go to their house because it was easier that way. And I had the flexibility back then to do that and the time and space because I was still new to it. And I remember reading for her and she's like, can I please show you a picture? And I said, absolutely. And she went into her bedroom and came back out and it was a picture of her husband and he was like a greaser. He had his motorcycle, leather motorcycle jacket on and his hair was slicked back and he was wearing jeans. And I was like, that's exactly what he's showing me. That's exactly what he's showing me. And it was just, again, it was this beautiful thing. And she she just reminisced about how amazing he was back then and before, you know, he got old and couldn't move as well and his motorcycle and how important it was to him and things like that. So there is this incredible thing about seeing that and being able to go back to that energy and um, to be able to connect to that joy that they had in that lifetime. Often the the questions I often get when I do mediumship are, are they okay? And um, do they know I love them? So yes, they are definitely okay on the other side. They transition over typically, and this is interesting for humans, for people, um, it takes a few days to kind of tran- transition to the other side. It's almost like we have to go through like, what level are we at? Where are we going? What are we doing? But it always seems to take a few days to kind of transition to be able to communicate fully with them. With pets, it's not the same. I think, you know, with pets, they just, they go to this beautiful place and there's no transition piece to it. It's very interesting. So with um, humans, people, like I said, there is this little bit of transition, which is challenging to connect with them in that time that they cross over. And then from there, they, they are more accessible and easily spoken to and attached to. But there is this little window where we can't really communicate with them very well. They will share messages. Um, I still remember I, my grandma's been passed for about eight years. When she passed, um, I kept on seeing her face and her showing me a box, seeing her face, showing me a box. And I was so confused and she wouldn't tell me what it was for because they're just that communication was still not there. But it turned out that their marriage license was missing. And um, when my mom told me that, I was like, oh, there's a box. I said, it looks like a plain box. I kind of feel like it's a jewelry box, but it doesn't look like a jewelry box. And that's where you're going to find it. And lo and behold, it was in my grandfather's jewelry box, which doesn't look like a jewelry box. It's just a plain wooden box. Um, And there it was in there. And it didn't make any sense to anybody, but that's where it was. So she was able to communicate that to me without um, saying too much. Like I said, it it kind of was one of those things where I held on to it until it was the right time to share it with someone. And then it all made sense to me because she wasn't telling me anything else, even though I was asking, she just wasn't in a place to share much more as she was transitioning still. Um, so when our spirits come through to share messages with us, 
they typically have a purpose or a reason, something that was unfinished business, something that we are going through currently right now, um, something that we need resolved or we need support on, or something that went on with the two of, like with those two spirits that need to be resolved. So this is that part of like, people will want someone to come in, but they won't necessarily show up because they don't have a message for you. There might be nothing that they have to share in this moment. So the other side of that is, one, it's not often who you think is going to come in is going to come in when it comes to a gallery reading and a mediumship reading. People are like always like, oh, I hope it's this person. And it's not often that person. It's often someone else. So I always suggest being really open to who is coming through for you because it might not be the spirit that you were hoping for, but it's someone that has a clear message for you and... The caveat to that is that sometimes one spirit shows up and brings through another spirit who is more shy or timid to come through. So when we sometimes when we poo-poo something, we are actually turning away multiple spirits instead of just one. So it's always important to be open to that. The other side of that is, again, if there's no unfinished business, if there's no messages, there's nothing that's going on, they're not going to come through that way. The last part of that is sometimes when we want something so badly, it won't happen. We actually block it because we are in so much desperate need for something to happen. The other thing that I've noticed as I've moved through this journey is the people that show up asking for like a code word or something along those lines will often not get it or spirit will tattle on them because I don't. I don't like skeptics, not in the sense that like, I don't like you. I love you. Don't get me wrong. But when somebody comes in and starts to challenge me, then there's a wall that goes up and then I can't read your energy or I don't want to read your energy or spirit can't get through in the way that they need to because you won't allow them through in the way that they need to. You're, you're guarding that energy. So when those skeptics come in and they were demanding a password and this, that, and the next thing, it means they don't believe. And we all know that seeing is not believing, but believing is actually seeing. When I have people that show up that are like, please just mention the ring or, you know, please just mention this, often that will show up as validation. But those people are coming at it with a different energy. A skeptic is like, I don't believe and I want to prove them wrong versus someone who wants validation from the other side and believes in what it is and just needs it to like be solidified for them. And I know that kind of sounds like the same thing, but it's actually two very different things and two very different energies. So know that regardless, spirit always gives us something that I wouldn't be able to just look up about you, that I wouldn't know about you easily. The spirit always gives us something that is really validating. That is like, yes, how would she know that kind of thing? And let me tell you, I don't have time to Google you. I don't want to know your full name. I really like, I have a list of first names so that I know who's supposed to be there and we don't miss anybody, but I don't have time to look you all up. Honestly, honestly, and nor do I need to. Your spirits on the other side tell me everything that I need to know, and I don't need to go looking you and Googling you or Facebooking you like some people think. The one thing that I've always held really strong about, though, is that everybody is entitled to their own belief systems. I have been blessed to witness so many skeptics come into my room and leave a believer, and it is so beautiful to watch that melting away of, like, this is BS, and then to realize that it really is something that's so beautiful and can bring such deep messages, love, and healing. But I also am somebody that will not get in a pissing match when it comes to our belief systems. If you don't believe in the work that I do and you don't think that there's another side, if you don't believe that spirit can still talk with us, that's okay. I honor you. I respect you. And I would never force you to be with me and do this sort of work together if that's not something that you want to do. But I do know what I do. And I know what the messages I bring through and I know the connection that I have and I believe so strongly and deeply in that. And what I really love is being able to share that with other people, to be able to 
have that gift of giving one more message from the other side. And let me tell you, when spirit wants to spread the word and get to people that they want to get to, they do the work. I still remember one of the first gallery readings I did at a local um, event space. I had someone come that they registered that day and they were a little unsure and a family friend came in through the session. And since that session, I've read for all of their family. Um, and it's been quite incredible. I've read for quite a few of them multiple times and it's so beautiful. And I love bringing through the spirit that comes through because they come in with so much energy and joy and love for their family. It's so incredible. So like I said, they're respectful. I've had sessions where, you know, a spirits come in and the person is not ready to hear it. And we are able to share something that they understand who's there and that when they're ready to hear the message that it's there for them. And then, like I said, the other side of that is sometimes they find a way to get the message to who they need to get their message to. The other side is such a beautiful thing. And the gift of being able to connect to the other side is something that I am so humbled with over and over and over again. To share messages, to be able to connect, to, again, give that last few words from someone you didn't think that you would hear from again, to give closure, to give understanding, to give support. And it comes in all ways, shapes, and form. And I just feel, like I said, incredibly blessed to be able to share that with others. Um, mediumship is an incredible gift. And I'm a firm believer that everybody is intuitive and we all have our own different way of doing it as well as our own skill level. And the more you do something, the better you get at it. So you always have the opportunity to learn about mediumship. I do teach. I also do mentoring. Um, so it's a beautiful way to kind of deepen in. I, I was really blessed to work with some people that um, were willing to work with me when I got started and, you know, help me to fine tune my gift and to be able to grow it. Um, I know that there's definitely people that come to my circles because that's exactly what they're doing when they come to an event is they're learning, they're watching um, as I learn and share. So it is, um, it is definitely something that if you want to learn, there is lots of opportunities to do that, not only with me, but tons of other other amazing mediums that are out there. Um, I do do gallery readings on a regular basis. Um, I don't do a lot of readings in person. Gallery readings is the big one that I do for in-person readings. And then from time to time, I offer in-person readings at different events. Um, uh, up and coming, I'm doing in-person just regular readings at Mystic Ramen in Hamilton, Ontario on October 17th. Um, I have a space for about 15 mini, mini readings that day. Um, if you're interested, you can DM me. I'm happy to send you the link and some information on signing up for a ramen and a reading. Gallery readings I've started doing on a regular basis. I've decided to keep them to a small group to guarantee everybody a reading and the time frame factor of it. So my gallery readings happen the second Friday of every month um, in Dundas, Ontario, and it is limited to eight participants and everyone is guaranteed a reading. It is 8.30 p.m. till 10 p.m. It's $40. I do have a bigger event coming up, though, if you are interested in some haunted Halloween fun. Uh, we're doing Haunting Halloween on Sunday, October 27th from 7 to 10 p.m. Um, one of my friends, Bert, is going to come and teach spirit photography. He is a paranormal investigator that comes at it with a very heart-centered way of investigating, and he has some incredible photographs of spirits, and he's going to teach you how to do that. Um, as well, I'm going to be doing mediumship readings throughout the night. Um, Bert's presentation is about an hour. We're going to chat with the spirits in the space during that time so that you have the opportunity to try spirit photography if you you want to. Um, and then I'm going to do about a two hour gallery reading for those that have come, all the loved ones that you bring with you. So that is an opportunity to experience that kind of in a bigger setting. Um, I do have a, I'm working on a, um, a night with spirit in the London, Ontario area as well. Keep an eye on my newsletter and my social media for information about that one. Um, if you have questions about mediumship or you want to know a little bit more, feel free to drop a comment, send me a DM or an email. I'm always happy to share. Um, yeah, 
thanks for letting me ramble about mediumship today and kind of my love for the other side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, from my heart and soul to yours. Have a great week, everybody. Bye now.